Welcome back to Stasis. So we've got a bit of a robot problem back here. And to deal with it, it seems like I have a portable defibrillator and a high temperature slug gun. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do with them, to be honest. I've tried shooting the robot and that's not good enough. There's obviously something with these power cell housings. Something. Like, how do you open them and why would I want to open them? Am I even supposed to open them? I feel like I am. Although, it looks like... Yeah, if I want to use something on it, I have to do it from here, not from the screen. Or I'm in it, because if I move my mouse to the side, it just disappears. I think that would break. Yes, it would. What if we use the defibrillator on a power cell? That makes... Don't go well no, together. that makes no sense. Alright, there's also this power pad. Which does that every time I walk across it. That's gotta mean something, right? Like, is there any way I could pick up this power pad and put it in the pathway of the robot so then the robot goes over it and then gets, like, shocked or something? I don't know. It doesn't look like I can take it. I don't think the slug gun's gonna do anything. I think that'll just break it. No, like, there doesn't seem to be a way for me to pick it up. I think that would break. I've already got the slug gun from the toolbox. I can't seem to pick it up. Hmm. I don't know. There's power cells that I don't seem to know how to open. There's a power pad that I can't pick up, although I imagine if I could pick it up, I could put it in the way of the robot and probably have it drive over it and die that way. There's a sink here that has water. Mm, I thought about possibly plugging up the drain so that the water spills out and then using the portable defibrillator on the water puddle. Like maybe once the robot stays here, it would be in the water and could and I could shock it, but I don't really have any way to block up the drain. I really don't know. And I don't think there's enough time to get to the platform. Like, I could slowly walk behind it, but it just... Mm, I'm pretty sure I would just die. Because I've gotten... Like, I've gone right here behind it when its guns were switched the other way, and it just instantly killed me. Maybe? It's possible, but it's really unlikely I could get to the platform in time. But there's another power pad up there. Which also has to mean something, and there's also another sink up there. Like, I don't know. Mm, let's go back to the birthing laboratory. I use the defibrillator on the bloated fetus. No. No. Crazy. I mean, the women certainly don't need it. They are still alive, barely. I need help. Uh, what? I'm gonna help you. Just close your eyes. Wait, what did I just do? Bandage? Huh? What? I don't understand. I just clicked on her and I took a bloody bandage? Why did I do that? Also, this is, I think, the first time I've ever actually had an inventory that needed to scroll. I didn't even know that was possible. My quantum storage device is big indeed. Okay, can I get another one from her? Just breathe in and out. Soon you'll wake up from this. No, I didn't even know there was a bandage on her. Let alone that I could take it. Okay, I've got a bandage. Well, um... In that case, maybe my sink idea was correct. Let's try to stop up the sink. Yeah, okay, my sink idea was actually correct. Stop it up, let the water flow, and then use the portable defibrillator. Okay, and I'm gonna save just in case I accidentally shock myself. I don't know if that's possible, but uh, given what's happened in this game, let's assume it is.
Liquid from the overflowing sink has splashed onto the floor, pooling on the polished floor. Wait a minute, did it stop short of the water? No, don't, don't walk out. No, no, it doesn't. Okay. In that case, let's do it. Don't stand on the water, John! Jesus. Okay. Wow. I thought for sure John was going to die. He was standing, he still is standing right on the water as he shocked it. Just wait a second. I want to make sure this thing is actually dead for good. Let's apply the five second rule to dead robots. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's dead. Easy Okay, well, the puzzles in this game continue to be um, an odd mixture of sensible and also really mediocre. Like, stopping up the drain and making the water flow out and using the portable defibrillator totally makes sense, fair enough, and I even thought of it. That makes sense, but the problem is I didn't have anything to stop up the drain. What doesn't make any sense is that I can just take a bandage from one of the pregnant women and I didn't even know they had bandages? Like, I, I couldn't even see that they had bandages. And I swear I clicked on one before and I didn't take anything, so maybe it was only, only, like there's only a bandage on one of them? I, I don't know. But that's silly. I don't like feeling like I have to click on absolutely everything, like five times, just to make sure I don't miss an item. Bleh. I don't like that. Up we go. Well, if I was being generous, I would say that this is simply a force field that would stop me from going through it. But... Warning. The oxygen atmosphere generating system is no longer functioning. Product failure is imminent. But, given the game, most likely if I walk through this, I'll probably be chopped up like a carrot under a cook's knife. So I've got some twisted metal. Hmm. Hmm, I could probably use that to maybe open up the power cells or something. It's another sink. This one I can't use. Whoa, 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 whoa. What does that do? Oh, do you have to stay on that and then it stops this? Hmm. And technology that provides an energy boost for heavy duty equipment. Okay. So it just provides power to whatever's standing on it. Hmm. Okay. I don't actually know how that's going to help me. There's no heavy duty equipment here, but I do have things that could take the charge, I suppose. Metal and. Hmm. The airtight steel frame forms a secure barrier to the adjacent room. Should I try walking through it? Okay, let's try walking through it. I'm so gonna die. Let's watch the death animation. Oh, I can't. It's actually just a force field. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Um, I don't think that'll work. Metal plus power pad, no. I could use this twisted metal to try to open the power cells. Don't really know the point of that, though. I do still have this canister. This isn't going to work. Mm, well, let's go to one of the power cells. What the heck do I do with this twisted metal? 
Maybe we use that on the power pad over here. I mean, it seems like the power pads don't move. Like, it seems like they're mounted to the ground. I can try to make it sit, but it may break. Not used on this one either, huh? What am I supposed to do with this metal? I don't get it. Oh, do I shoot the airlock? Uh... No? Well, he tried to shoot the airlock. Hmm. I don't even know why I'm shooting the airlock. The only reason I thought of it is because it says it's airtight. And I thought about maybe this gun could shoot a hole and make it not airtight. Although I can't see why that would open it. Uh... Liquid nitrogen? Do I have to stand on the power pad? Does it do anything? I mean, the gun works without the power pad. I don't think that would work. Hi lick mm. A hydrogen canister doesn't really uh, no. I'm sorry, no, that that wouldn't work. I'm not a scientist, but I'm pretty damn sure that wouldn't work. Oh fuck. More test subjects. This one just like crawling around under the table. It's fallen from the operating table, only to crawl around in aimless peregrination. No doubt delirious. Frighteningly thin creature, courtesy of Kane Corporation. I really don't need to look at these things anymore. What is this? Bone mending glue. Bone adhesive? Ew. It's gonna be useful, but that sounds really gross. Jesus. Can I, like, put that thing out of its misery? I don't think that'll work. Just let it writhe around on the ground? Alright. I'm sure that's from Dr. Milan, right? No, Dr. Charlotte. Oh, Francis, I still lie awake at night thinking of you. You haunt my dreams, my nightmares, and my fantasies. We found love, dear. Even when we worked in Kane's Sydney lab, creating viral strains that could turn a human inside out, we loved and made love. Ours was a match made in heaven. We worked on only the most exciting viruses and pathogens. Our work together was a Mozart requiem, a piece of perfection. My work now is a pale imitation of what it was once. Oh, Francis. How long ago was it now? It must be ten years. But it feels like only yesterday. You were too sick to transfer to the Groom Lake when I did. You died just as I took up my post. But don't fret, my angel. I've begun concocting a way of bringing you back to life. I always called you my little Frankenstein. Do you remember? Shredding the boundary between life and death was always your ultimate goal. Well now, with Project Seed entering its second phase, my plans can finally be put into practice. Oh my god, she actually was trying to bring back her dead husband. The laboratories are off limits between 2am and 4am, so that's when I work. Naturally, I prepare all the calculations and machine settings in my quarters. I keep the subject under a false name in one of the pods. 
So far, not even Dr. Milan knows what I'm doing. Each major laboratory operation I perform takes no more than an hour, and I always erase the machine records at the end of each one. I'm using your DNA, my darling. With the enhanced regenerative abilities of the genetic material we've already synthesized for seed, you will be reborn. But you'll be impervious to physical degeneration, immune to sickness and pain. I'll have done what you would have wanted and made you perfect. And when you step healthy, unblemished, and reconstituted from your glass womb, you'll never leave me again. Things have felt strange lately. My work continues, but I swear, darling Francis, I can feel you watching me. I'm trying to work longer hours to complete the new and reborn you, but it's not easy. Marvin has already had a look at some of my work, I'm sure, as if he'd have any concept of what I'm trying to achieve anyway. I still wonder, my darling, why you cursed me as you died. You know it was an accident. I know you remember that. It wasn't murder. I've never committed a murder, not even when we tested the pathogen on those troublesome neighbors. It was an experiment. How were we to know they choked to death on their own innards? I suppose death was a possibility, but that's science. <laughs> choked to death on their own innards. What the fuck, Charlotte? Was every, was every scientist on board a goddamn psychopath? I mean, we've seen some logs of scientists that aren't psychopaths, okay, like, uh, a Akiza? I, I think that was their name, Akiza, who's just trying to do good and get back their family name. But goddamn, a lot of them were psychopaths. At least three of them. I fear for your continued life. I'm afraid Milan knows. Who else knows? Have they contaminated you? I will run extra tests to make sure your code is not flawed or altered in any way. I'm anxious. I've started scratching my arms, badly. At this rate, I may end up looking like that leprous toad backman. Uh, yeah, so let's just go down the list of people who are basically confirmed psychopaths. Uh, we've got Backman, we've got Milan, we've got Charlotte, and wasn't there a doctor? A while ago, around the time I did the surgery on myself. I don't remember his name. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there was a doctor who basically said that he enjoyed seeing blood and doing surgeries and that he's sick and fucked up and he knows it. I don't know if he's a psychopath, but yeah. At least three, probably four. Oh my dearest Francis, I failed you. Milan knows. He confronted me about it directly. He wants me to make you just like them. I cannot have you crawling on all fours like some dog in the street. The very idea offends me. I will protect you with my life. You will be reborn. I swear this on my life. Uh, I have a feeling I might meet her experiment or something. Healthy organism. Are you sure about that? The creature strains at its bindings. It seems healthy, though judging by the fury in its eyes, it's far from pleased. I guess it's relatively healthy. Emaciated, starving organism. Its body is wasted away to little more than sinew. Withered, strapped, strapped, writhing in pain. Jesus. Subject Halana. Host was Tara McCormick, First Lieutenant, Marine Liaison. Observations. Rambunctious. The subject appears to have inherited her mother's powerful physical build and latent aggression. Lana has the makings of an excellent alpha female candidate. Recommendation. Move Lana to a group cell as isolation, isolation appears to promote irritability. Daryl. Host was Willow Brody, nurse from the medical deck. Quiet, but intelligent. Attempted to pick the lock on his cell yesterday, but failed to escape. Excellent puzzle-solving skills. 
and while not especially aggressive, has a strong build. A thinker, clearly. Hmm, sounds like me. Well, maybe not the excellent puzzle-solving skills part. Frederick. Mary Maxwell, non-crew member. Caterer from... Phobos? Or is it Phoebe Pho... I... hmm. I feel like that's not pronounced Phobos. Anyway. Subject shows little of his mother's solid frame, but is a superb hunter. Stalks and learns tactics by observing the others. Appears to be developing a strong tactical mind. Nay. Uh, oh, God. Ellen Marichek, Space Tourist. One to watch. Cunning. Extraordinarily fast and dangerous. Appears to prefer isolation as attempted pairings result in fatalities. Takes an alpha role easily. Dominates the other Novi. A definite candidate for Lana's mate. Oh, fuck. Projection of it seems to be squirming a lot faster than it actually seems to be squirming. The computer hums with activity, processing petabytes of essential body data. Wow, so this must be like a super special subject here that they're studying. Surprisingly antiquated considering the surroundings, but then appearances can be deceiving. Indeed glass wall over here and there's something glowing. That observation wall is stained top to bottom with an unpleasant array of sticky dried substances. Life support. This machine charts the heartbeat of the wretch strapped to the table. creature squirms in its medical restraints. Great black eyes and a sunken gray face glare with malice. Open power cell housing. The mechanical utility housing awaits a replacement power cell. Huh, looks like it needs three power cells. Hmm. Maybe I have to go back and open those three power cells to get them. A new remotely operated surgical model, and utterly lethal in the wrong hands. It could split steel just as easily as it does flesh. Ooh, that might be useful. Take a look at these logs. Ah, here's Dr. Milan's. Oh joy.
The new year begins, the wheel turns, and the Groom Lake continues to lead the vanguard of scientific discovery for all of humankind. Yet I feel dissatisfied. Even as the peons who work under me celebrate the new year, I wonder, why? Why would you celebrate such an asinine concept as an outdated Gregorian calendar on a ship that's currently swimming through the depths of space? The reason is clear. Comfort. They fear the unknown, the alien, the impossible. I do not. I embrace the unforgiving cosmos with open arms. The problem with the research we do is the humans doing it. Constrained as they are by conscience, remorse, and sometimes even fear. We try to grasp the infinite and give it a framework that ill fits its, its cosmic splendor. This is my tenth year as Special Projects Director for Kane Corporation. And despite my discoveries and quests for knowledge, I'm held back at every turn by paperwork, moralizing scientists, and that group of degenerate toadies that I sit on the board with. If I were rid of them, then my word would be God. My word, not the word of a corporation. Still, they have their uses. The research is funded by Kane, and the Groom Lake is kept running by the money and personnel they provide. But the time will come when all this changes. You mark my words. Hmm. I guess Dr. Milan probably saw the opportunity to go on board this ship as basically the opportunity he was waiting for. Somewhere where he could be away from the corporation and all the people that kept tying him down. Somewhere where he's alone enough and has enough control that he can do whatever the hell he wants. As he obviously did. I'm inundated with emails from all departments about inconsistencies with storage and contaminated samples. This grand masquerade is sometimes more tedious than it's actually worth. Worst of all was Dr. Wei, and that technician, Miss... Callister, is it? I'd normally make short work of such troublemakers, but it hardly seems worthwhile. Troublemakers must be allowed to make trouble, because if they disappear, that legitimizes their claims, and somebody will always take up the fallen crusader's torch. Dr. Backman's tendencies are becoming harder to restrain. I'm well aware of his shortcomings. The old man is as brilliant as he is deranged, yet manages to go about his work with a sociopathic glee. He's useful to have around. He has requested more bodies for seed, specifically more women who were recently pregnant. Now that is problematic, as we have very few such women on board, and imports are not easy to come by. We may have to play this one under the radar. That fool Dr. Gray complained yet again about his beloved insects becoming more aggressive as a result of the power outages. So what? Let them spill out onto the decks as far as I'm concerned. The importance of seed outranks the hydroponics project work by a thousand to one. I do like playing chess with Dr. Gray, of course. I win every time. A little fact he's unlikely to tell anyone, although he does seem quite happy to contact anyone who's interested with the opinion that he'd be the next best candidate for my job. Sebastian, you would not, could not, handle what I do. If you believe otherwise, then you're as great a fool as I imagine you to be. When the day that I foresee comes, your rotting corpse will be under my feet, and I will laugh. Dr. Williams is still under the delusion that I don't know about her personal research. Officially, it's illegal for staff to conduct their own research, but this is interesting. Recreating her dead lover in the form of a hybrid. How fascinating. If it works, I'll make use of it. If it doesn't, then it'll burn with the rest of the rejects. The woman is obsessed, and I know that DeSantos is playing no small, no small part in feeding her delusions. I know her secret research won't cause me any problems, or I would never have allowed her on Project Seed. So, it seems contaminated waste from the corpse disposal overspill is contaminating the ship. It's causing fungal growths, or so my various drones tell me. The fungus is a riveting proposition, though. 
While I'm angry at Dr. Backman for terminating more subjects than strictly necessary, these unintended side effects are fascinating. I intimated as much to Dr. Gray, and of course stroked his ego with hints of promotion and glory. He'll keep the fungus alive. The engineers want it destroyed, but I'm sure we can delay that. This experiment is becoming more engaging by the day, and I haven't even had to lift a finger. So while they clog up my inbox with demands and Rome burns, I plan to play the violin. We're more than secure here anyway, and this has a certain inevitability about it. I must record the daily developments as the experiment grows. Okay, yeah, so that confirms what I was pretty sure about before, but this confirms it absolutely. Contaminated waste from the corpse disposal overspill is what caused the fungus. That is what caused the fungus to grow on everything, which I believe is ultimately what caused the explosion that let out everything and let out the test subjects and made everything go to hell. It is as I foresaw. Panic, destruction, and mayhem. And yet, Seed continues apace. Once the fervor and the flames die down, we'll sweep the decks of detritus and repurpose all of it for my beautiful hybrid creations. No more growing plants for the good of mankind. God is no longer in the machine, my friends. I am God. My beautiful children have excelled themselves. They kill, they learn, they adapt. A primal species without any of the trappings of morality. It's their time now. They almost came to be once, many years ago, but were snuffed out by humanity, afraid of its natural successors. The systematic extermination was given a name, the Eugenics Wars. The public knew it as corporate warfare. In truth, it was a coordinated genocide. Humanity wasn't ready for Professor, Professor Jerun's astounding discovery and sought to destroy it. His work was not perfect, of course. That's where I came in. I spent most of my life as part of Cain, trying to access Professor Jerund's original work. By the way, I don't know whether it's pronounced Jerund or Gerund. I think I've switched between the two. I have no idea. Old man Cain pushed me to the top because we shared an ideal, the utilization of science for the perfection of humanity. Where we differed were the methods by which this was to be achieved. Not that he had much more to say after I held that pillow to his face as he lay in his hospital bed. All for a higher purpose. Creation of our species from raw subjects will become impossible now that the crew are dead, dying or unclean, but that's hardly an issue. Any subjects who are flawed or imperfect have been turned into the fertilizer that will nurture the perfection of the surviving race. Now the challenge is moving the Groom Lake out of range of any other ships. No one can be allowed to escape the ship alive. Any good strong survivors will become members of the new race. I am their creator. I control. I transcend. DeSantos, I'm so very disappointed in you. A distress signal. I thought we were of one mind here in Seed. I'll castrate and destroy you for this betrayal. Your flawed body is hardly worthy of becoming one of my children. But for now, I must turn off this accursed signal. You cannot hide from me, Marvin, you drug-peddling little fuck. Okay, so DeSantos did actually get off a distress signal. We don't know whether it actually reached anybody, but he did get it off for a certain amount of time before Milan turned it off. That means there's a chance. There's a chance. There's something I was going to talk about, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. So apparently he killed... He actually held a pillow to Gerund's face, or Gerund, and killed him. His obsession with these experiments goes far and wide.
Robert Lincoln. I've been reassigned to investigate the disappearance and murder of two scientists in the employ of Dr. Milan. A strange matter, to be sure. I've been observing the movements of some of these eggheads, and I can't say I'm too impressed. Doesn't anybody around here record their comings or goings, or make any notes? There's no traditional organization in this department whatsoever. Project Seed answers to nobody. This I know. But I thought these scientific types always made notes. Not that I care about admin, but I very much care about finding out who's selling weapon-grade secrets. Industrial secrets are a matter of life and death. Especially death, in this case. My investigation will be thorough, and no stone will be left unturned. The staff here are... strange. And in fact, I'd say lots of them are even crazy. But I couldn't care less about that. I just want names and answers. <laughs> lots of them are even crazy. That is absolutely true. Oh my god, were they crazy. Well, Lincoln... I'm guessing Dr. Milan probably had you killed at some point once you started finding out too much. Investigating these disappearances. Or, investigating these... Well, disappearance and murder. I got this job because I get things done, not because of my warm and caring personality. At the moment, people are taking umbrage to my investigation. But security is a constant and essential part of shipboard life, especially when we're talking about industrial espionage. I'm not sure where the two missing scientists are, but it seems, based on the modified records I've found, that they were killed and ejected into space. Any other man would assume that these two were the criminals, but I don't buy that. As far as suspects go, I've ruled out Charlotte Williams and Marvin DeSantos. Charlotte, because she doesn't know where she is half of the time. And DeSantos, because he's just a smirking shit for brains. I'm confident that he's involved in drug dealing. And I will give him this. He is cautious, and acts like he's a real ladies' man. But I know the truth. I've seen him rejected repeatedly at the bar. Since July, I've had to operate under the pretense that I'm an assistant. It's lucky that in my career I had some emergency room experience. The only other person who knows about my true purpose here is Dr. Milan. He's been encouraging. He constantly supplies me with information that I require for my investigation, and at times is a little over-helpful. Still, he seems honest enough. For the record, I'm well aware of the kind of man Dr. Milan is. I've seen his experiments with my own eyes. I've seen what happens when the bodies are disposed of and the burning fires of the furnaces. But he does what's required to justify the means. There are few men in this world who will do what has to be done. For that, I admire him. He told me to watch over Dr. Williams' experiments. It seems they're unofficial, and although I prepared a report to Kane to have her removed from her position, Dr. Milan immediately overrode my request. I respect him, but to be honest, I don't like having my authority overruled. Backman, of all people, was sniffing around today. It seems the old sociopath suddenly became curious. I asked Dr. Milan for further instructions, and he told me to incapacitate the old man. This I did. A shame I had to break the old guy's kneecaps. Honestly, I was hoping to slit his throat, but Dr. Milan insisted that he remain alive. Alive and in pain, but unable to move. Okay. Yeah, so we read Dr. Backman's uh, PDA and he talked about waking up in the hospital with his legs broken. Not remembering what happened. <laughs> I'm revising my earlier opinion of that DeSantos character. I still think he's a pathetic little shit, but I now believe he was partly responsible for some of the stolen information. He strikes me as an amateur, put up to this by an outside agent. I'll deal with DeSanto soon, but first I've got to monitor his movements. Make one move, pal, and I'll have you. Dr. Milan has earmarked me for one of his experiments. I know this, because when I attempted to leave the ship to report to Kane Corp, 
I discovered that my access was restricted and blocked. I came back to my quarters and found Milan waiting here. He was waiting with two of those hellish critters that he's created. I'm not squeamish, but those things make me nauseous. I'm currently awaiting what he calls processing. I suppose at this stage I should make peace with God. I've killed many men in my life, and I'll never say that I feel remorse for it. And I won't give Dr. Milan the satisfaction of hearing me pray for mercy. My last notes on this affair are that Dr. Milan himself is at the heart of the events on board the ship. I was blind to it. I refused to believe that he was capable of creating such devastation. I always thought that scientists liked control, but Milan breaks all the rules as far as science is concerned. The leaked information, the fungal growth, the missing scientists. I'm beginning to suspect he even knew that DeSantos was actually selling intelligence, and may have fed him the information to sell. To what end, I don't know. I suspect it was because DeSantos kept Backman drugged to the eyeballs with whatever powerful stimulants he happened to have so Backman could continue his work. I can hear the machines being turned on. I welcome my fate. At least I know that I did my job for Kane Corporation. <laughs> At least you completed your terrible job for a terrible, incredibly unethical corporation. Not sure that's much of a satisfaction, but then again, this guy seems to be nearly psychopathic just like everybody else. Jesus Christ. The people on this ship. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like... I do need the power cells, and there are three slots, and there were three power cell housings that I could potentially open back there. And what am I going to do with this bone mending glue? Am I actually going to use it for bones? And if so, then what bones? I don't know. Alright, well, I was thinking I would finish the game in this episode, but it looks like not have been some very lengthy PDA entries to read, and my throat needs a rest right now. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.